嗨，大家好，嗨，玉伟好。呃，接下来这一场是由、呃、Rust 社群长期贡献者吴玉伟为我们带来的 How does Tally build small, fast, and safe native web application？ 让我们欢迎玉伟。Well, hello everyone. Um, I just want to let you know that before before the start of the video, I want to let you know that you can leave any question in Chinese or English. I can answer both and After the question, if they still have time, I'll try to maybe start a demo to show you how to start a Terry demo app. Okay, so I think it's good to start. Okay, 可以开始播影片。My name is Yu Wei Wu. I'm the core developer from Terry, and today I'm going to talk about how does Terry build small, fast, and cross-platform desktop applications. Um. If you never heard of it, don't worry about it. I'm going to introduce what is Tauri, but um, I'm not going to actually teach you how to use it. Unfortunately, we do have getting started guide in our website, and I'll provide a link at the end of the talk. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it will guide you to build the application very easily. So if you are interested in Tauri, feel free to head to our website or just GitHub repository. Uh, we we are also welcome any feedbacks to help us improving the tutorials. Anyway, what I'm really going to talk about is the underlying components that make all of this dream come true. Some of them are built around the web engine and the system web view. So if you are familiar with Rust, you are going to know a lot of crates and how to use them. But、um, if you are not familiar with it, don't worry about it. You are still going to learn different development environment between different platforms, and most importantly, how to use them with the tools that you have. So what is Tauri?、Uh, in short, it's a toolkit to build desktop applications that can run on all major operating systems. So yes, it can runs on Linux. This is the application I built on Arch Linux. I use Arch, by the way, and it can run on other distribution for sure. This is Raspbian on Raspberry Pi four, and it can also run on Windows, and not just Windows ten. It can runs down to Windows seven, and last but not least. Can run on Mac OS and even the newest M1 series. And one of the best part about Tauri is you can build it with any web frontend frameworks. So you can build it with React, and you can build it with Vue. You can build it with Svelte. And yes, this is the Hello World example on Svelte. It just doesn't have the icon. <clears throat> And it's not just limited to JavaScript.、Uh, we have WebAssembly built into browsers nowadays. So, any language that can compile to WebAssembly are all possible. For example, this is a to-do MVC example from U. U is a web frontend framework for you to build web app in Rust.、Uh, it compiles your crate into WebAssembly, and that's how it made your Rust code runs on browsers. <coughs> Um, in order to realize how many benefits we gain from Tauri, we have a monitor to see the result of benchmark between ourselves and other framework. And as a result, you can see that we have smaller binary size. For example,、uh, a Discord app is around three hundred megabytes, but we have a community member that build a lightweight version with Tauri, and it is only six megabytes. We also have lesser memory usage, thread counts, system calls. And dependencies, and all of these don't compromise any speed at all. In fact, Tauri is really performant. So, how do we do it? How could all of this possible? Well,、uh, I believe one of the major reason is we try our best to bridge the system libraries. Modern operating system usually have built-in web browser, right? So, if there's a web browser, there's a web engine, and usually they will provide the library for developer to use that engine. And that library is called WebView. If you already heard about it, you should already see the documentation about WebView on Android, iOS, macOS, and even Windows. It's usually used for application to load web pages into specific sections, but it also provide many powerful features. So it's possible to use it to become an entire desktop applications. 
the main problem is they usually don't share the same interface between between platforms. They usually can be used in the same languages either. So back in the day, we use a library written by Csearch. It's a CPP library, and it tried to bridge all three desktop OS. Uh, despite it did do the job, it still suffered from many scalability issues. I think the main reason is because all the code base is written in one single header file. There are also other issues like the build scripts are different. On Linux and Mac, it's a shell script, but on the Windows, it's batch script. And the tool chains are also different. And even the links library will be different. And there are many more. I'll, I'll discuss them in later slides. And that's the moment I think we really should build it our own. Eventually, I published a crate called WebView Rendering Library. And I think the outcome is pretty great. It not only cover our requirement from previous dependency, it also provide many more advanced features we wish to have, such as multi-window, as you already saw, and menu bar, custom URL scheme, uh, system tray, and, and many more. So now I'm going to tell which crate, which dependency, and which framework we use on different platforms, because some platforms usually recommend specific tool stack languages and even IDE, but in reality, you are free to choose everything you want. And in our case, we choose Rust because it is performant and it also provides excellent foreign function interface interoperability. And it is also possible for us to make safe interface on top of unsafe code block. But I believe the following I'm going to talk is not limited to Rust. Many frameworks usually follow the system API. So as long as you can match the API, you're able to use them. And I hope there are several notes you could take in later slide. So let's talk about the first one, Linux. Uh, we use GDK apparently, because GDK is usually the recommended GUI framework to develop on Unix systems. It also provides a web view library called WebKit GDK. And in Rust, we have an organization called GDK Rust. They provide, they provide the credit you need to develop with GDK. Um, and I have to say they did a phenomenal job. The interface is pretty ergonomic. Uh, and, all, and all libraries you need has a credit for it. So the Linux port is probably the easiest one for us to support. <clears throat> but you may say, hold on, GDK has the concept of object-oriented programming, and Rust is lack of some of its features. For example, a GDK window has object hierarchy. It is inherited from GDK bin, GDK container, up to G object, and it is also inherited by several objects like G GDK dialog, GDK application window. How does a GDK window call a function from GDK widget in GDK Rust crate? And how do we determine a GDK widget is actually a GDK window from the return value of a method? Well, the first one is easy. We could implement the trait for it. And this is also what GDK Rust did. So a GDK window has traits like GDK extension, and hence it can call the trait method from GDK widget. The second one is more difficult because in Rust, you cannot simply transmute a type into another in the safe way. Uh, you could use trait object, but it also produce some overhead. <clears throat> Frankly, in GDB Rust, there's a cast trait. It can help you, for example, upcasting GDK window to G object and downcast your GDK window to like GDK dialog. And what's the best is upcast and downcast are done in compile time. So if you call to the wrong hierarchy tree, call to the wrong object, it will just produce compilation errors. <clears throat> Here's a code snippet from our library. Here we try to add web view to the window and if there's no 
menu bar, that means we can simply add it. But if there's one, that means we have to retrieve the GDK box, which is used to contain the menu bar. But what we really get from get children method of window is a GDK widget. So we try to downcast it and then pack the web view into the GDK box. <clears throat> and the next one is Mac OS. It has Cocoa Framework as it has a built-in Cocoa Framework for GUI development. It also has a built-in web view library called WK Web View. Uh, WK stands for WebKit. It's the same engine used by Safari. Uh, the challenge for using them is they are not in C anymore. It's actually in Objective C. So in order to call the API of those libraries, there's a Objective C runtime. You can use it in C, CPP, and even Rust. But the annoying part is, you every function call needs to have a prefix of Objective C message stand, and that caused our code base nearly unreadable in previous CPP library. This is one of the example. A typical function call will have a class and several selectors and you give the values to them but the problem is you have to call the objective c message send every time if you want the value of a var variable so one line in objective c will usually result in several lines in cpp uh, despite we, we we did have some macros for selector and class that's still not ergonomic and what even worse is in newer version of Mac, it requires a uh, type check. So you cannot just pass voice star, you have to give the exact type of the function call. When we move to Rust, things got a lot easier. There's a OVJC crate and it provides several hygienic macros for us. And those, I have to say those macros are pretty powerful. For example, as you can see that if I write set value in the, the correct position, it will know it's a, it's a selector. We have, I don't have to do any end calls other than that. And it becomes pretty similar to Objective-C. You just still have to add the macro prefix and that's all. Another thing you need to be aware is you have to release the NARC object. Uh, the NARC stands for new, alloc, retain, and copy. And these, these keywords will alloc allocate memory and in Objective-C you have to release those memory manually. <clears throat> uh, but uh, Objective-C also provides several class and types for you to releasing them. Uh, for example, there's a NS auto release pool and in OBJC crate and Coco crate all, all have similar function and method for you to, to use it. And in our <clears throat> in, in our library, we use another crate called WC ID. It provides an ID struct similar to to the RC type in Rust standard library. It's a it's a reference count object, so it will be released once no one is reference it. Here's an example of how we use it. We allocate a an string from object C runtime and wrap it into the ID struct, and it will become a reference count object and it will be released automatically once the count is zero. We don't have to worry about the memory leak. And the last one is Windows. I have to say developing on Windows is pretty much like playing Dark Soul. It's cruel and it's unforgiving. Every time you finally find a way to progress, it's just like finding a treasure case in Dark Soul and it turns out it's a mimic and you just die. <clears throat> we. In our previous web view library, we also suffer from this. Almost 90% of issues because of Windows. And when I was when I was writing the new library, I it took me like a, a it took me like a day for Linux, uh, a week maybe a week for Mac, but it took me six months to finally figuring everything out on Windows. <clears throat> Anyway, eventually we choose Win32 
and a new WebView library published by Microsoft called WebView 2. It is based on the new Edge browser, so they share the same web engine, which is Chromium. I think the most common asked question is why Win32? Why not use WinRT and UWP? Well, the most obvious reason is Windows 7 still has around 55% of market share and we have to support it as a library perspective, as a framework perspective. But uh, WinRT isn't available on Windows 7. But when Microsoft announced they are going to bring WinRT support to Rust, I'm actually pretty excited and I Try, I actually try to use it. Uh, it's pretty decent. I really appreciate their efforts, but it's still in pretty early stage and some of features are still missing. Uh, there's no ergonomic way to define serial objects. I still have to use unsafe functions and the documentation on importing UK package are missing at that time. Uh, it took me uh, for a while to finally import the WebView 2 package and the la last one is probably the most important uh, some class and interface inter implementation are still not there because C sharp still has concept of OP and Windows Rust doesn't have a way to implement custom class and interface yet and even the the way to initialize objects are different too here's an example Regarding this issue, uh, the i vector from Windows Runtime is a interface, and you have to implement it in C++. Uh, they offer a, some template metric to do it, but in Windows Rust, it just doesn't support it yet. So despite it does generate all the methods, it, it just doesn't have the constructor. So there's no way to actually create a i vector in Rust. So we still use Win32 afterwards in order to use it. Uh, there's a crate called Win API. And the way to use it is pretty similar to libc. The only thing you need to note is the header file is list as feature flag in Win API Rust. So in order to call the functions from specific header, you have to list those feature flag in your cargo tomo file. And then we have to talk about WebView on Windows because it's more complicated than WebKit on Linux and Mac. First of all, we can use Chromium Embedded Framework, short for ZF, because it's not built in, obviously. Uh, if you have Internet Explorer, then the library Microsoft provides is called MSHTML. And if you have the old Edge browser, it is Edge HTML. <clears throat> Back in the day, we choose Edge HTML as our backend on Windows for the old WebView library. But then Microsoft decided to abandon it and embrace Chromium. So the new web Edge browser is now built on top of Chromium. And the library they provide is now called WebView 2 Runtime. But the problem with WebView 2 is it's only building in new version of Windows 10. The old version of Windows 10 and even 8 and 7 don't have it. So Microsoft provide a bootstrapper to download the runtime only. You don't have to download the Edge browser additionally. <clears throat> but again, this means developer have to distribute the bootstrapper to users. Uh, so in Tauri, we do this for the developers. Uh, and Tauri app will check if user have WebView 2 if they don't have it, it will redirect a link for them to download it. Now we download the WebView to runtime. We still need a SDK to use the interface. That means we have to import the WebView to NuGet package. And in our old WebView library, we use a batch script to do it, but we still kept encountering people open issue, stating that that doesn't work on their devices. And it took and it took us quite a lot of time to fix in them and some of them just we, we just couldn't figure it out and the issue just sat there for years. After we rewrite in Rust, I finally realized what's happening 
Apparently, if you use GNU2 chain, you will have, we will have to import the web view to load the DLL file next to your build executable, or it, it won't it won't actually load the runtime. And I think the Go developers suffer from this the most because the FFI for Go is called SQL and it is only compatible to GCC. And if you want it to work with MSVC, you have to do a lot of works. You have to also dealing with OSDLL and also make many more configurable. <clears throat> and if you use MSVC, uh, which I believe most Rust developer use this by default, you just have to use the static library called WebView to Loader Static. But again, for some reasons, you need to use the Visual Studio 2019 version or newer. The old version like 17 and 15 won't work because they won't link the library correctly. Eventually, we use a binding crate to wrap around the WebView 2. And here's the build script to import those required file. So you don't have to do this your own. A build script in Rust is usually called build.rs and it is executed before cargo compiles your crates. Here's we first check the cargo environment variables, like checking the tool chain architecture and the directory to those files. And in last two statement, you can see we try to link the study library if it use MSVC or the DLL if it use GNU2 chain. And it is still not over yet. We still encounter many issues. Uh, there are several features still missing from WebView 2. And sometimes we even have to write the raw CRM object ourselves. And many functions from WebView 2 are as async, so we have to provide a executor to figure out when it is complete. One of the most hilarious issue is WebView 2 doesn't support custom URL, so we have to use some URLs like HTTP localhost to load the local assets as a workaround. But the result is it usually took several seconds and even 10 seconds to actually open a window. Compared to Linux and Mac, they usually just open a window immediately. And one day, I just add a dot in a URL and suddenly it loads the page immediately. Uh, all I can think about is maybe because <clears throat> localhost is not actually a valid FQDN and maybe that triggers some error handling loop underneath. There you have it. That's how Tauri builds small, fast, and cross-platform desktop applications. Uh, right now, we already published beta version, so if you are interested, welcome to Tauri.studio and give it a try. Uh, we plan to release version 1.0 in September or October, so everybody can use the stable API in not just Rust, but also JavaScript. We, we are also working on mobile support, uh, right now, iOS support is already working, uh, and we we will explore the possibility on Android later. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, until next time. Right. Um, I say that I, I won't show you how to how to create our app, but but actually we have a we have a tool called just co-create Tari app to to let you start your Tari app project pretty easily. So to start it with it, you just need to type yarn, sorry, let's see. yarn, yarn create Tari app. <clears throat> oh, sorry, it's been wrong again. <laughs> All right, and it will ask you to choose your name. So let's use it, Coscop, Coscop, and your title, Coscop. And you can choose which framework you use. And in this demo, I'll, I'll choose Vite. I believe it's called Vite. I, I used, used to call it, used to call it Vite, but, but someone correct me that it should call Vite. And the, the template I want to use in Vite, it's you, let's use Vue. 
and it will take a while to compile it. <coughs> sorry, sorry, not compile it, download and build it. And it's not just limited to view, uh, as you see above that it is available to use with, um, where is it? Okay, I can't find it, but it's possible to use it with Angular and, and React. So at say it's say done, and you can you can move into that directory and type yarn tell that. Right. <clears throat> so it, it'll it'll take us some time to to build it. Hi. <clears throat> How are you? Hey, yes. Uh, hey, can can you make a, a front size uh, bigger? For you, YouTube uh, live stream uh, to see it. Uh,没有人讲讲中文好，什么意思？哦，抱歉抱歉，可以把事情放大一点吗？谢谢。自己，OK oh, okay, OK sorry let me let me make it bigger uh super big <laughs> yeah I think that's big enough. So in this creator app, you use bits plus with view. And I believe it also use the view CLI. So it actually, we actually trying to incorporate with all the possible popular web from end framework. But some of them is still missing. I believe spell is missing. So welcome if anyone is interested in this tool, this creator app tool, welcome to open a PR to that is support with um, uh, Svelte, and it's 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 pretty much pretty much just just JavaScript. <clears throat> okay, so so yes, here's the example how they run it, and to actually configuration for it, you doesn't need to write Rust. You don't have to actually know how to how to how to use Rust. If we have a configuration file under source Tari and Tari config.json file and here you can see all the all the configuration possible configuration. For example, I can choose I can change the dev path. This is the path you 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 navigate your 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 page. So I can change to coastcup maybe coastcup org. Save it and let's run it again. <clears throat> and yes, you can see that you navigate to coastcup page instead. And that's pretty much it. So let's see what question we have. We, I think we can we can change to the question page. Okay, now I see that on the slide there are two questions. Okay, now I will speak Chinese because because it is Chinese. The first one is about beta version. I am now in beta, and we expect that in. 九月或十月的时候会出正式版，其实现在差不多正式版，只是我们一直在有有一大堆的，就前端的更新，就是我们有提供 JavaScript API， 但嗯，要让 JavaScript API 好像符合每个每个 framework， 好像都有一些非常非常小小的 H case 需要修这样子。然后我们我我我自己是希望可以在九月前就出完，因为这样我们就可以接着 h o c t o b e r f e s t 这样子大家可以参参与十月的活动<咳>。那第二个问题是说。t a r i m u l t i p l e console， 那事实上是我们是有的。那个，呃，在 Rust development 里面有分成两种 profile， 第一种是 debug， 第二种是 release。所以在 release 的时候你是不不能开 dev tool 的。但是要是你平常是在 debug 的话，像这边，呃，对不起啊，没有没有有屏幕哈，没关系，就是你平常按右键是可以开开启 dev tool 的。但不过那只限于在 debug debug build。那你想要在 release build 开启也是有办法的，只是你要再多加一些些 configuration file 在我刚刚。显示的那个 JSON file 里面这样子。好，那如果大家还有什么问题的话，可以在 Slido 或者是在 HackND 上继续提问。那呃，玉伟这边还有什么想要分享的吗？呃，差不多了，我在想，就是对，差不多这样子。<咳>好，那我们谢谢今天吴玉伟为我们带来的分享。嗯，谢谢大家。
。那今天带您读源码的议程就到这边告一段段落。那谢谢 Cost Cup 大家呃愿意今天来参与我们的议程，谢谢各位。